All right, so uh, today we've got, a, we've got a few lightning talks and then we might have a panel for some questions afterwards. Um, our first speaker today is uh, user Al Farmer for Thuan Thang uh, from the Vietnam Wikimedians User Group. Um, he's president. Um, he's also a member of the ECF Regional Grants Committee and is a global renamer in the, in the Wikimedia e ecosystem. So uh, uh, let's here. <laughs> All right, he's going to be talking about using bots to boost the content development of Wikipedia. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Han, and I'm from uh, Wikimedia Vietnam. And um, in the last session, I uh, saw a lot of uh, presentation about education, about development, community development, but. Um, I would like to introduce um, how to use bots to um, boost the content development in Wikipedia and the other project, uh, the other system project also. So um, the first thing that we need to know about how to use bot and what is a bot. Actually, the robot, um, the human, uh, we, we, we will invent robot to help us uh, some tasks in our real life, uh, but in, um, Wikipedia, a bot uh, will be a tool and uh, it will help us to um, carry out some repetitive and very boring tasks like add category or just uh, fix uh, grammar correction. So um, before using a bot, we need to have some uh, community agreements. The first one that we need to set up the bot policy and the second one, you need to set up bot approval group. And um, somebody know about te technology or uh, related uh, things, they will uh, uh, form a group and they will uh, approve or not approve uh, any new user uh, want to use a bot. Uh, the next thing that, uh, yeah, we have a lot of bot tasks and uh, maybe some of you can realize in uh, English Wikipedia, we have a lot of bots. I, I don't know about uh, in your language edition, maybe. Sometimes you can see the, uh, some bots working. And uh, the first thing that uh, we have the anti-vandalism bot. Um, the second one, we can see that uh, if you create new account in Wikipedia and you can uh, see a message, a welcome message, and uh, also the other thing like uh, fix or a template category tags, uh, grammar correction or typo fixing or etc. Um, but the more important one, not uh, the bot, uh, they are more intelligent so they can create new content or they can uh, create new articles in different, uh, in, uh, different languages, not only English. Um, and then um, the other bot, you can see if you add a uh, bear links like that bear you, uh, URL, and this bot will automatically convert to the correct format. And um, back to Wikidata a little bit, because in the, in the previous section, some of you mentioned about Wikidata. And um, we also have another kind of bot to connect the into key links. And uh, I have joined Wikipedia um, since 2012. So I understand why uh, we build Wikipedia. At first, uh, when you write an article in uh, English Wikipedia, for example, like mathematics, uh, you have to uh, connect with, uh, uh, connect to other languages version uh, by using a tag like uh, the language code and the uh, uh, article name. So uh, in this case, you can see, uh, you can have like a net, right? and uh, very complicated, yeah? So uh, we developed Wikidata just to uh, act as a central hub. We store uh, in the middle uh, the information and we can connect uh, the other languages. The other languages. Um, next one. Um, yeah, maybe some of you here will um, uh, accept bots or you will deny bot. You don't want bot working in your project. So um, actually this um, very, um, we have many arguments. Uh, some 
good side of bot that uh, we can uh, bot can reduce human effort. So we can uh, focus on uh, developing the other uh, thing in Wikipedia or um, because on that in the left, you, you can see that we have 59 million articles in over 318 languages and how you can control all of the content. We have massive content. So that's why we need to use bot to detect each article and yeah, you, you want to do something with article. So that's why uh, that's a good side bot. And also I, I know in the reason right now, uh, except Vietnamese, because we have uh, over 1 million and the first uh, language edition in the reason have uh, one more um, million articles. So um, the trick here that uh, we use bot to create new content about the uh, species and about the plant, something like that. And the best, and we also have the best side bot. The first thing that, uh, do you think that a stop article is helpful? Like about the species, about the animal or plant? Yeah, they are helpful, yeah. but with some people that they, they are nonsense, meaningless, because okay, you just read a few sentences and you don't have anything else. So, um, <clears throat> uh, second one that is break the naturality. I mean that uh, the language naturality. So sometimes you add a sentence, it look like a robot. Maybe uh, Sydney is the capital of New South Wales. Yeah. Just a short sentence like that. And then uh, if we're lazy, we can depend on bot and working with it. Okay. So uh, how to create a bot is quite uh, not so difficult. Uh, first, you just need to have experience about programming and regular expression. I think, I think these two uh, we you guys don't need so uh, so much, just basic. But there's a plus if you know a language, programming languages like Python, like uh, .NET, C sharp. And uh, we have two famous tool to uh, you uh, to to start with, like Auto Wiki Browser and Py Wiki Bot, um, and then. In the next uh, diagram, you can see the process how to uh, create a bot. At first, you have idea, and then you discuss with uh, some people in, the, in your project, and you write the specification. You make a pro bot proposal. If fail, you will continue again until uh, you have the, the bot and you test your bot, and after that, you will run the, the bot. And in the future, if you have new function or you have um, something like you want to fix the bot, you will uh, return and update the bot. Um, the thing I give you some example about bot example why it is very important. So you can see that we have Clue and J bot. This, this bot, um, we will revert the possible vandalism. So in the left, you see that uh, somebody come to in Wikipedia and they try to uh, write something, yeah, bad. So uh, the bot will detect the content and they uh, and, and it will revert uh, the previous version. Uh, the next one uh, about the citation. I know all of you here come to Wikipedia. You cannot. Uh, all way for format correctly the, the the citation right so the bot will automatically do for you yeah. uh, about the delinker and uh, any uh, wiki common uh, picture or videos uh, with uh, prop the copyright and it will be uh, removed on wiki common so the bot will uh, remove the link in the other wiki project also. And uh, this one also very important because you know, um, we need to use the archive bot to store the link on the internet. And actually that we get uh, the link from Wayback Machine. 
And um, this guy is very famous, right? How many of you know in, in the room know? No, just one. Anybody else? Two, three? Okay, great. <laughs> so LHJ L- bought uh, his uh, from uh, Spreadit. He also had uh, his own article and he write, um, he used um, a, a, a bot to create million of specific article in Swedish, in Waray, because he uh, married, uh, and even not wrong, he married a Filipino lady. Okay. And she were no languages. So uh, in this way, uh, you can see back here a uh, little bit, you can see that she were no in the second uh, Swedish, in the fall, and maybe she were no so okay. So next one, uh, I want to do about myself uh, about what, um, because I'm currently a doctoral student in uh, Instituto Politécnico Nacional in Mexico, and in the meantime, I am also um, uh, doing my internship in Singapore um, Technology and Design University. So that's why um, I create my own board just to serve for my thesis. Um, the first thing that I, my, my board, I will I have a general fixing uh, and data may add fun- punctuation category and add facts. So here in Vietnamese, I will add uh, some category in the first line. And the second one, I want to change to Vietnamese uh, text and I convert the data from English to uh, uh, Vietnamese. So um, you see the previous bot example is quite uh, simple and uh, repetitive like based on the rule uh, principle. But right now uh, with the development of deep learning and a neural network, we, we have another kind of bot uh, with a better and um, they are smarter. Uh, the first thing I want you to do about a uh, content development board, and uh, some of you in previous session also mentioned about the generating wiki data to text, and that's exactly what I'm doing uh, in my thesis. The first thing that um, you have, you want to create new influent uh, article in any, any languages. So what you need, First, you need to have the knowledge base. Like uh, on the left, we have the Wikipedia info boxes, or you can have the Wikidata triple version. And then uh, you put that into the uh, sequence and sequence network or deep learning network. I, I, I don't want to go in detail about this, but just let you know the method. And it will automatically generate the text uh, in the right table as you can see that we have different methods so i just show you some example like that and um actually we have a project on that so it's called uh, abstract wikipedia as many of you know here our wiki function yeah so first we have the format uh like uh, we have somewhat similar triple but here we have uh, modifier also and then uh, based on that format, we can generate the text in different languages. Mm-hmm. So um, I think about the um, future of Wikimedia bot. And I think uh, the bot right now, I don't know, I don't know in your language, but I think in English and German right now are two most uh, developed uh, bot wikis. And they both are very intelligent and uh, they can do more function in multilingual style. And I think about the model that uh, we can uh, have the human bot collaboration. So um, uh, it means that human and bot can work together and help each other to improve the quality of content in Wikipedia. So um, this is an example. You can see a um, very uh, ordinary uh, ethical, uh, the, green, uh, the, the, the green line is bot and the blue line human. 
So uh, at first, the bot will just create a very simple sentence, and then human come and then upgrade the version. And the bot will automatically uh, detect and add the category and add external, external link mm -hmm. and add the template, the stub template. And for the reference, uh, the both bot and human can do uh, the thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have the article. So is it more convenient instead that you need to um, search for the, uh, the reference and then you can buy everything by your own in the beginning, the bot help you can do that. So uh, what I expect in ASAP uh, language edition, because I uh, joined to Asia conference two uh, times ago, and I don't see anybody recommend about this. So I expect you, you guys have your own bot project, and uh, you have some, uh, you can set up some bot policy and run something, do something with bot in the project. And then we can have a within model to improve the content development in your project. And that my presentation, thank you. Thank you, Doug. That was uh, really interesting. Uh, we'll have some questions. We will have, we'll have time for questions and answers after, but we'll, we'll um, go through the slides. And sorry, I just realized I didn't introduce myself before I started speaking. I'm Alex Lum. I'm the secretary on the Committee of Wikimedia Australia. Um, I have, think I have spoken to many of you. So uh, uh, if you do want to talk to me uh, later <laughs> before you all finish up, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd love to meet you and talk to you. So uh, thanks. For, thank you. Okay, uh, next speaker. Um, is Sam Wilson. Um, Sam is a software engineer on the community tech team at the Wikimedia Foundation, although his, uh, his, the opinions he's giving are his own, <laughs> not those of the Foundation. Uh, he likes to make that clear. Um, Sam's also been um, on the, the Wikimedia Australia committee for quite a number of years, and he's been a resident uh, indispensable tech guru, uh, so we absolutely uh, um, uh, you know, very reliant on Sam to to uh, fix our website and uh, and all sorts of things like that. So uh, uh, Sam is going to talk to you about um, indexing Australian content in Trove, uh, which uh, some, many of you may have heard of. It's a is an amazing uh, web system for the National Library of Australia. Thank you, Sam. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, so hands up who's heard of Trove? The Australians, I'm sure. <laughs> that, yeah. So uh, yeah, Trove is, is a, a project run by the uh, National Library of Australia um, to index catalogues from the National Library and um, lots and lots of other uh, Australian libraries and institutions. Um, so it's a sort of meta catalog of, of library catalogs and uh, archives and, and a few other things. Um, one of the, the, the things I've been dreaming of for many years is to get uh, Wikimedia content indexed in Trove so that when you do a search in Trove, you come up with records from your local library and from Wiki, Wikimedia sites. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, Trove includes um, seven major categories of, of content. Um, they're, they're listed here. Um, all of them have, have some correspondence to, to Wikimedia projects. Um, some more than others, uh, some are harder to, to match. Um, you'll see the bottom there, people and organizations no longer accepted. There does seem to be some question around uh, including um, biographies uh, and um, profiles of businesses and things like that, but I'm, 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 I'll get to that. Um, so you can see, yeah, books and libraries, that's the sort of bread and butter of, of, a, of a library catalog. Um, uh, Wikipedia doesn't uh, host much content that we would index in Trove, but all of the other sites, all the other Wikimedia sister projects do. Um, so uh, we've got um, uh, monographs and scores and manuscripts and, and records, um, uh, photos, of course, on commons, data sets on commons also, although that's a, a, a growing part of commons that, that not many people are taking advantage of at the moment. Um, audio and video and, and music, um, transcripts of oral histories and, and the audio itself, um, maps and um, scan digitized maps as well as uh, map data, 
um, all, all sorts of things. Uh, and it, it would be brilliant if we could um, connect these things uh, to, from Wikimedia. So the, the parts of this process that I want to focus on, uh, primarily it's Wikisource. Wikisource hosts lots of text uh, material, um, a lot of its published works, uh, and that maps really well to an existing um, library data uh, catalog. Um, so if you search for a, a published work in, in Trove, and it's a book and you, you, you'll find the record of the book and it will list all of the editions um, and all of the libraries in which you can find those editions. And it'd be wonderful if we can get uh, Wikisource listed as a library uh, alongside all of all the others um, with a very prominent link saying, you know, click here, you can read the book, you can download the, the, the EPUB or the PDF, um, all of that. Um, the other big part of it is commons, uh, especially uh, photographs on commons. Um, so the National Library uh, has an existing um, system with Flickr. So if you take a photo and you put it up on Flickr, you can put that into Trove really easily by adding it to a Flickr group uh, called Australia in Pictures. Um, and then three times a day, the, the, the Trove uh, bot will run and ingest the metadata of that image and it will appear in search results. Um, the image itself, the, 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 the image file remains on Commons, uh, sorry, on, on Flickr, um, and doesn't get copied into any database on, on Trove. It is just the metadata. Um, so we can do that with, with, with uh, photos and, and individual files, uh, audio and video as well, uh, from Commons. Um, and uh, part of that, so, so the, the, the items in, in brackets at the end of these, um, uh, indicate where we're storing our metadata. So Wikisource, we store our metadata in Wikidata. Commons files, we now store our metadata increasingly in structured data on Commons. Um, it's it's, a, it's a, a bit of a distinction because it does mean certain things about how we structure our image records. For instance, if you take a photo uh, and you crop it and you produce a, 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 another file, on Commons, we represent that as two files. Um, we don't have a concept of a unifying photo record for those two things. We treat them as newly separate things. Um, sometimes we might create a category to put them in, but more often than not, we, uh, if it's only two or three uh, derivative files for, for a photo, we won't create a category. And so we don't have a unifying identifier for a given photo with multiple derivatives. So that's a bit of a challenge um, because we wouldn't want to export multiple formats, uh, forms of the same work into Trove. Um, one way around that, as I say, is categories. And so possibly the way to do this is, is, to, is to use categories a bit more. Um, Wikipedia is where we host, uh, obviously, biographies about uh, and articles about places. Those are, uh, would be very suitable um, and, and sometimes um, articles about individual books and newspapers and all sorts of things that do exist on Trove. Um, but this project isn't really focusing on, on the way of getting those things into Trove at the moment. I think that will come, but um, it's more the bibliographic and, and photographic things that, that I want to focus on. So the, the, the next part of the, once we've figured out a way of structuring and exposing our metadata and, and figuring out the mechanics of that is actually what do we want to export to Trove? What do we want to make searchable in, in Trove? And Australian content is the answer. And that's quite difficult um, to define. Uh, we, we might say, well, you know, all Australian books. Um, Australia as a, as a concept, I think we were talking about this on the cruise last night about um, that Australia didn't exist until 1901 as a as a, an entity that exists in Wikidata anyway. So if we were to try and write queries to say, find me all books ever published in Australia, we would be leaving out a, a, a whole bunch of types of things. And we might also inadvertently be capturing a whole bunch of things that we wouldn't necessarily think of as Australian. Um, the same goes for, for photography on, on commons. Um, I was looking at, at Wiki shoot me uh, just now um, around the hotel. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, of nice photos of um, uh, individual um, motor vehicle models, well documented, well uh, captured, 
Um, but I'm not sure if we would call that Australian content. They, they, they happen to have been taken in Australia. Uh, they may not be the types of things that we initially want to um, make available in Trove. So um, the idea is, at least to start with, is to make it an individually opt-in process that the Trove template um, on Commons and on Wikisource and on other projects will be added to the, uh, the page or the talk page or the file page um, of whatever is to be exported. Um, and that, that's a, a, another tricky point because on Wikisource, we have lots of works that are actually sub pages. Uh, we might have a newspaper that's been transcribed and we want particular parts of that to be treated as works in their own right. Or we might have a, 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 a book of short stories or that there's a whole bunch of things in which a sub part of it needs to be treated as its own work and it in fact gets exposed as, as, a, as a solitary work. Um, but it would still link back to its parent, of course. Uh, so the Trove template will operate on in a whole bunch of different situations. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, as I was saying, we want to avoid uh, having, um, if you put the template on multiple things that should be considered together, we need to make sure we're not exporting those as multiple records and they're ending up duplicating effectively in Trove. Um, the other part of this that, that's quite interesting is we already have quite a few uh, thousand or, or tens of thousands of items within Wikidata and, and, and Wikisource and Commons that already exist in Trove. And we don't want to be exporting those and making them appear to Trove as new works. We want to make sure that where we have taken something from an existing state library or the National Library or other institution, that we are recording the Trove ID against that item so that when we're re-exporting our metadata, Trove knows that it already knows about that and it can link us accordingly, which is another tricky uh, step on this. So the, the, the envisaged workflow is that you add the Trove template with no, no parameters. Uh, this gives a nice little human readable box that says what's going on and adds the, the page to a category. This can happen on a talk page or the main page or in a, in a Wikisource header template or in a whole bunch of other ways. Uh, the, the Trove tool that, that I'm working on, on that, that's running on Toolforge scans that category, takes all those items, um, creates the required format for, for exposing these to Trove, which is a OAI PMH um, feed, or uh, th there's a couple of other ways in which we can do that. I won't go into the, the technical stuff, but um, that, will, that will make a, a, a feed available to Trove. Um, we tell Trove about that. Uh, Trove periodically, a couple of times a day, a couple of times a week or something, um, scans that feed, uh, imports everything, and in that importing process, they're assigning a new Trove work ID to those items. Uh, our tool then looks at their API, finds those work IDs, and adds them back into either the Wikidata item or the structured data on Commons. And then uh, the displayed template changes at that point and says, hey, look, we're also on Trove. Click here to see uh, where you can find this photo in a state library or a, a local library near you for a, a book or other things like that. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the sort of Wikipedia, w w Wikimedia user facing uh, process for, for how that'll work. Uh, the, the tool forge tool um, it'll have a uh, it, it'll be running periodically uh, it'll have a, a web interface that that'll show what's going on and that will also be highlighting um, problems like if someone nominates a work for um, I think we're getting blown off the top of the building here um, if someone nominates a work for for exporting into into trove and it doesn't have all the required metadata or or, or there's there's um, it it's uh, saying things that are inconsistent or the, the we detect as being um, not not able to be exported, then we can highlight that and we can we can let the user know we can um, send them a, a, an echo notification on their wiki or there's a few other ways in which that can work. Um, it, there are a whole I've been looking at the existing works from Trove in, in our projects. And there are a whole bunch of inconsistencies around the data and that needs to be cleaned up and we need to make sure that we're guarding against creating any further inconsistencies and problems with that. 
Trove also provides a whole bunch of other metadata about um, other catalogs, like, like the catalogs that it is aggregating also have their own IDs. And we can be bringing those in as well once we've made the connection between our identifiers, Trove's identifier, and then we can farm out and get a whole bunch more. And that's a really interesting process, I think. Um, often you'll look up a, um, you, you might look up an image on Trove, you'll find the, the, the image, but actually all it is is a link to another library. And that other library might have a completely different system of actually viewing the image. They might have a, um, like a common one is, is sort of a, a, a zooming viewer where you can zoom in and you can do stuff. And there's a lot more functionality that's not exposed through the obvious APIs. So uh, the, the, where we are with this, this process um, is uh, very initial steps. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of looking for anyone who's interested to, to help figure out the problems here and um, make sure it's not doing the wrong things and solving the wrong problems. And um, then we're gonna work through and we're gonna make sure all of the existing uh, IDs are sorted out and are, are good quality data and are not gonna be duplicated when we re-export. Then uh, there's a money aspect to this. Uh, Wikimedia Australia needs to sign up as a Trove partner in order for them to sign us up as, and be able to harvest our metadata. Um, that looks like it's somewhere in the order of $2,000 a year, but of course, there may be possibilities around negotiating that. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, if we want to appear as a, a library within Trove, um, we need to get a NUC symbol allocated to us. And I'm not sure about the process of that, but I'm sure there's librarians who know a lot more about this than me. Um, the, the initial stages of adding Trove to, um, to, to existing items, uh, we can work through all of that, and then we can start adding the Trove template to, to new things, and things will be exported, and everything will be interlinked. Terrific. That's all I've got to say. If anyone wants to talk about this, um, th there's a page on Meta. Um, and yeah, I'm around this afternoon. So cool. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, great. Okay. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Kerry Raymond. He's a retired computer science professor and a researcher with a passion for local and family history. Um, she combines her skills and interests in finding ways to use IT to improve how we research history. Um, she's a very active contributor to Wikipedia on Queensland history and geography topics. And there are thousands of articles, uh, any one of the thousands of articles about the, the Australian state of Queensland um, have probably been uh, edited or, or corrected by Kerry at some stage or created. <laughs> So thank you, Kerry. She's going to talk to us about the web to site, is it? Web to sit. Web to sit. Yeah, oh, there's no way. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kerry. Over to you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm here today to talk to you about web to sit, or how I call it is how to train your dragon. Um, I am Kerry Raymond, I am user Kerry Raymond, and I'm Kerry Raymond at Wikipedia, Wikimedia Australia. So very simple, I'm just Kerry Raymond. Mm -hmm. Okay, why are we interested in doing this? Wikipedia likes online citations. Why do we like online citations? Because it's easy for our readers and contributors to verify the content. Uh, online citations also make it possible for the reader to explore the content in greater depth. So there's lots of benefits to having online citations on Wikipedia. So if we want more online citations on Wikipedia, let's make it as easy as possible to create them. Now, who here is familiar with Citoid, which is also known as Site Automatic and Visual Editor? Oh, not as many as I thought. You should be getting into it. Um, now, Cytoid is the first step. If you're using it at the moment, you will know that if you give it a URL, sometimes it gives you a nice citation, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gives you a citation that's sort of okay, but you really like it to do something better. So web to sit is the next step where we go from what is essentially a very fixed way of trying to create these turn a URL into a citation to a way that you can provide a bit of input to, to get a better outcome. You can train it. So 
If we look at something, this is a Queensland government website about the parks and forests of Queensland. We have hundreds of national parks. It's a reliable source and often cited in Wikipedia. Now, what is the problem? If you go with Cytoid, what happens is you get an awful lot of mumbo jumbo appearing as the first name and the last name. Now, these web pages do not have individual authors. It's picking up this random rubbish. So we'd like to get rid of some of that stuff. So what we'd like it to look like might be something more like this with the title, with the slightly with the the names parks and forests and the fact that it comes to the queen from the queensland government which is about the authority of the site in question so it would be really great this is a great source to cite but at the moment cytoid isn't doing a very good job if only i could train it to get it right so how do we go about it well if you're using web to sit what will happen is when you give a URL to it, it will do a cytoid citation and it will do the web to sit citation, if it has one. Um, and then you can choose which one you insert. And of course, like any of these, you can further edit it if you wish. But the game is to try and get it so good you won't need to. So, just a bit of a clue about how it's written. If any of you are familiar with Zotero, um, you might, it uses uh, functions from Zotero. And if you want to get to the training module, it's down through that link at the bottom. So what's going on in web to sit Well, the training tool is a set of forms you fill in. You start by providing an example URL from a web page from the site that you're interested in. And for each of the citation fields, you need to say if that field is required, if it's required, where do you get the information from and how do you transform that information into the correct format? So sometimes you need to do a lot of steps, sometimes you don't. So for our parks and forests website, I start by saying, I don't need that last name, that gets rid of that piece of rubbish. I don't need the first name, that gets rid of the other piece of rubbish. I say, yes, a title is required, but Cytoid got the title right. So I don't have to do any work. I just say, oh, use Cytoid's title. Website, hmm, oh, I'm going to require that. But because we know exactly which website we're dealing with, we can just put a fixed value in there, parks and forests. The publisher, it's always going to be the Queensland government, a fixed value. So that's how you train it. And that's how we get oops, the results you saw over here, the nice one that we wanted. So one of the other problems you will encounter when you're using Cytoid is that sometimes it won't find the author. And here again is another Queensland government website. The Queensland government websites don't work very well with Cytoid. Um, in which case we're missing the author. Now, in this case, there is an author. It's a government minister called Mark Ryan. So how are we going to train Cytoid to get it right? Well, this is where you have to have a peek inside the HTML and find where that name appears. Now, you don't really have to understand the HTML, but what you have to notice is what paragraph or other HTML structure it appeared in. So once you've got that, you're in business. So oops. what we do is we say to web to sit I'm going to teach you how to get the author's last name. I want you to use XPAR to get the text from that thing that I just copied and pasted out of the HTML. Don't understand it, I just copied and pasted it. And what will happen, it will give us back this Minister for Police, blah, 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 
the Honourable Mark Ryan. I then say, split it around the Honourable. This gives me two pieces, the bit before, Minister for Police, etc. Piece two, Mark Ryan. I say, I just want piece two, Mark Ryan. I then say, see that space? Split around the space. This gives me Mark and this gives me Ryan. If I select item two, I now have my last name. If I select item one, I now have my first name. So it's a fairly simple process to transform the information that you find in the HTML into the fields we need for a web citation on Wikipedia. So in this particular case, what you will see, there's suddenly Mark Ryan appearing as the um, author of this work. The other thing it wasn't picking up before was the date where I did the same trick. I found the piece of HTML that held the date and away it went. And incidentally, web to sit is very clever. If it said yesterday or today, as that particular government website does say, it converts it into the date for you. So that's, that's very handy. Um, and I made a few other little adjustments, but they were just fixed values, so nothing exciting. So where is web to sit Well, the training tools live on Toolforge. Uh, but to be honest, I don't have to sort of go there because you use the training rules. The training rules, which are created by the training tool, are on Meta. That's where we store the rules. Now, that is quite unusual to store something like this on Meta as opposed to Wikipedia, one of the Wikipedias. The reason it was chosen is because it makes the new citation format available to every language Wikipedia. The negative of doing it is we cannot include any links in the citation fields as they will not necessarily be present in all Wikipedias, particularly not in foreign language ones, of course. Um, you can find the project documentation on Meta at that address, but most importantly, if you want to use web to sit, you must follow the instructions to install it. This is putting a couple of lines of text in your common.js. If you know about common.js, you're fine. If you don't, well, someone else can do it for you. Now, remember, only one person has to set the rule up, has to train the website. Everybody else can then benefit from it. So that's the great thing. So what's the status? Well, the project, which was funded by the Wikimedia Foundation, has been completed. The prototype has worked. All my examples you saw there are for real. Um, I would like to congratulate the project leads, Diego and Evelyn from um, Brazil and Uruguay, respectively. I have started training my dragons. I've done several of these now. Most few weren't too successful, but you know, I got better with a bit of practice. Next steps, which we might do perhaps through the ECAP structure, is perhaps run some training sessions for those of you who'd like to learn how to train the citations with web to sit Perhaps we might form a dragon team for mutual assistance in doing that. And we also can encourage other contributors to use web to sit but not necessarily to do the training if they find that too hard. And of course, provide feedback to future development of web to sit Thank you. Thank you so much, Kerry. I can uh, I can hear some common.js. JS is being furiously edited as we speak, uh, particularly from New Zealand. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, any, uh, do we have any questions for any of our speakers? Uh, yes. Right. So this is for Sam. I couldn't find talk Colin Trove. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, from Amanda. Thank 
probably know what's coming, Kerry. Uh, can you use this for reports or other types of um, publication? Uh, yes, I'll know the examples I know. <laughs> uh, as long as it's got, a, it works from a URL. So as long as you're talking about an online journal article or an online report, in, uh, you can instruct it that the citation type is journal or document or whatever. So um, all of the normal types are, are available. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Oh, another one from Amanda. <laughs> Oh, question for Sam, Sam, sorry. Um, have you consulted the National Library about your project? And because just everybody seems to want to do something with the National Library's API and they seem a bit resistant to <laughs> the pressure. Um, no. Um... That's a very good point, um, but I, I didn't want to be premature and, and not do something that wasn't going to be possible. Um, I want to get our side sorted. Getting our side sorted is useful anyway, even if they don't want us. Um, yeah. Uh, Kerry, I've got a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, is this like replacing cytoid? It, it it seems like it's duplicating it in a way. Like, shouldn't cytoid be able to do this? Um, I think this. Sorry, I think this is a question for where it goes in stage two a little bit. Um, if enough people like it and think it's a great idea, I imagine it could replace cytoid in the long term. At the moment, you get the cytoid one and the web to sit one. Uh, so that's an intermediate sort of position, but where it goes in the future, it could become and replace cytoid, yeah. Thanks, Kerry. All right, final call for questions, comments? No, oh, is Toby, no, you're putting your hand up. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> we've got plenty of time. <laughs> A quick comment to Sam, um, Mike Dickerson and uh, one of the state librarians here um, have been talking about a slightly similar thing to try to get um, Wikisource books onto the WorldCat and OCLC. So we'd love to talk or include you in those conversations. Thank you, Toby. Anyone else? Right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the session. I hope you, you learned a lot about tools and bots and uh, API, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is Sam is doing. <laughs> Lots of curly brackets and uh, templates and so on. So.